I actually always wanted to do filmmaking and I always say that my father's a great storyteller. So I, from a very early age, found out that you could study film and from 14 I think I focused on going to college. So I did a four year degree in film and media and from that I did three years specialising in editing in the National Film Television School and from there that just springboarded me into editing documentary features and then in 2008 I did uh, The White Girl which was my first TV drama and I got a BAFTA nomination for that so then I just went all the way continuing in TV drama. But I, I love everything, I, I actually love editing documentaries or drama or animation. When I was in film school in Dublin originally and I was focusing on directing, I found that I was always sort of interested in putting the story together in the cutting room. And then I was only 22 when I went to National Film School and if you specialised in directing you could only do one film a year because you had to choose drama or documentary. And because I was so young I wanted to do all of it. So editing or cinematography would have enabled me to do that and I chose editing because that was really my interest and my joy. And then once I was in doing editing I've never looked back really. Say for example for documentary, what I, what I like about documentary and I would urge any up and coming editors to, to edit documentaries, now creative documentaries, I wasn't doing you know cookery programs or something, I was doing creative feature films that were being shown in festivals and then you have to find the story and you have to find there's a, an integrity to telling a story about real people who exist in the world outside of the frame of your story. So then in drama I sort of took the skills that I had learnt in that in how best to tell a story that the plot would reveal aspects of the character, keep the audience involved and engaged and empathising with the character. So for me, trying to tell a story that moves an audience really interests me and, and sort of the subjective point of view of the scene. So I'd approach every scene that I'm editing trying to find what is actually happening underneath you know, the subtext of the scene, not just the dialogue spoken, but the onset is as relevant and as necessary as an editor to carve out as what has been said. I was trained originally on film, so I, I trained on Steenbeck, and I think it was in 1997, I was still on Steenbeck when I got a job to do a big documentary on Avid, and the film school gave me a three-day Avid course, and it's incredible for me then, my movement from film to Avid was quite seamless because the, the way that you can organise your bins and the way you, you can tackle the project in Avid replicates for me how I worked with the trim bin and hanging things up. And so the software, it is, it's like second nature, it's like driving a car, you just do it automatically. Editing on the Avid, as opposed to the Steenbeck, allowed greater speed greater choice for the director so if it was on film I did one version and if I had to unpick it and do a different version it took time. On the Avid I could do another version or we could discuss things quite quickly and cut in a very visual way and have different options. Uh, the one thing I would urge anyone and not limited to Avid but any non-linear editing system is for the editor not to get sort of submerged in too many choices or too many options. Try and keep the discipline of the story what is the story about, how, what is the audience to feel and to use the tools to do that. So that's what I like about Avid, that I can use my footage quite well, I'm fast, but I do try and make sure I'm not too fast because by the end of the cut you could have many versions of one scene and you don't want to get snow blinded, you want to keep focused on the true intention of the film and the story. The only thing I notice that I do possibly different from young, younger up and coming people, because I I'm used to film, I edit my video on one video line and I do use the video 2, 3, 4 for titles or if there's video effects but I don't, I don't you know, put different shots, different options on other tracks and when I was working on a different series another editor who came up through the ranks of assisting I noticed that he was sort of blocking, he had different options on video 2, 3, 4 whereas I don't, if I make a choice that that's the moment of the wide shot I'm going to use I just put it down I don't give myself multiple choices on the video line. But I like that Avid does enable you to do visual effects, that you can split the screen, you can freeze the frame if, if you need to change something. If the person on the right hand side of the frame is nodding and talking and you need them to be silent, you can split the frame and keep them not moving. I like those aspects of it that are quite simply, you can just manipulate the image to help you the rhythm of your editing.
I definitely would have to pay homage to obviously the script first because the written script, the, the story is told and for example I did Ripper Street and um, Richard Warlow wrote the script in a very visceral way so that sort of jumped out of the page so when we were shooting it we wanted to keep that visceral nature of the cut. So my job in that instance when the script is sort of implying a more faster type of editing, my challenge was how to keep the characters alive and the audience identifying with the characters in the midst of all this visceral fast cutting and I think Game of Thrones is the same thing there's so much happening but you just have to find key moments where you see your lead character you see what's happening and you understand the jeopardy and I think that is um, something that that comes from you and then if I'm doing a different film that like The Missing where we had deliberately wanted to withhold the cut so that the audience would be at the edge of their seat and wanting to find that child who was missing. There's a great joy and challenge in being able to manipulate the, the, the edits that gives an emotional reaction to the audience or psychology of editing. I think because, because you do have the script and you do have the rushes, so there's a, there's a dialogue between yourself and, and the rushes. So when I'm watching the rushes, I do keep eye, an eye out for anything that has been shot before action or after cut and I grab anything and I pull out, I watch the rushes normally from the last take and maybe the penultimate take and occasionally the first take and I do a selection bin of my favourite bits and then I'll remember, I have a very good memory, so I'll remember for instance that the wide shot had a moment in it that was really excellent. So it doesn't have to be the beginning or end of the scene, it could be in the middle of the scene and then I'll take that out and begin to construct around that and when you watch it back I think you just feel it. I think most people would just feel it. You might think, oh, that's really good, but I'll change that around. So it's like a dialogue or a dance with the rushes as you begin to construct the scene. And there's an architecture of shots that I think all of us have in our bones, anyone who watches films or on TV, of the power of going from an extreme close-up to the big wide, how that can make you feel if, you know. So that comes into play as well, the, the psychology of composition and how to how to use the shots to the best advantage, not to overuse the close-up if the close-up is important, not to use the, overuse the wide shot if the wide shot is important. Well, I love sound, so and I love editing with sound and music, and I think most editors are the same. And when I first saw Terence Davies' film, Distant Voices, Still Lives, his use of sound for memory just resonated with me, and I just thought how powerful a tool the, the audio is. So I, yeah, I love it. So I will, in my assembly stage, I'll already build up the sound design. Even if it's a wind atmos or if there's some sort of creative use of sound, I'll use my temp tracks in the same way that I'll try and flesh them out. So nowadays, thanks to Avid, our assemblies are rich. They could have colour correction, they have sound design, they've got temp music. And I think our executive producers are used to seeing that and they expect to see that. But I enjoy doing that as well because it does help me bring, once you, once you use creative sound, it actually can inform your editing and it can help you find a better story, a better way of telling the story.